Thank you. I'd like to talk to you about a remarkable project, something called the Z Home Project. And let me first define that. It is a townhome development in the Issaquah Islands, uh, 10 unit uh, green homes built to US EPA water sense standards, constructed in 2010 and 11. And there were a whole bunch of people who worked very hard to make this whole project happen. Uh, basically, they wanted to demonstrate that uh, deep green, ultra sustainable residential living is possible and practical. So first, what makes a home a Z home? Well, there are a few elements. Energy, the homes all have solar panels and they all have geothermal heating and they're a, uh, actually a net producer of energy. They, each home there generates a little more energy than it consumes on an annual basis. Uh, home health, they took uh, great lengths to make sure that all of the products used inside the home were of low toxicity, so no urea formaldehyde. All of the paints, finishes, sealants, caulks, everything like that was uh, clearly uh, uh, chosen for its uh, low toxicity. Very helpful environment. Materials, all the wood in the home is Forest Stewardship Council certified. Uh, when they started out, they drew a circle around Issaquah of a radius of 500 miles and said we're gonna try to source all the materials, or as many of the materials as possible from that radius, and they did. They also recycled about 90% of the construction waste from the project, and they used a lot of recycled materials inside the home. The countertops, for example, were recycled. And water, this was uh, my area of interest, and they wanted to have a, about a 70% reduction in water usage as compared to a national average of an existing home. So it's about 100 gallons per person per day, and that's a lot, but that's assuming a home with uh, older fixtures and a sprinkler system. And they wanted a, about a 70, 71% reduction from that. That was their benchmark. Um, so how is the water efficiency achieved? Well, first, all of the homes have rainwater harvesting cisterns right out back. They collect the water that falls on the roof, and that water comes into the home. It is filtered and treated with UV disinfection, uh, and it goes to flush the toilets and to wash the clothes. Uh, all of the toilet shower heads and faucets are EPA water sense certified, the clothes washer, dishwasher, Energy Star certified. Uh, this, they have a central hot water distribution system. You've all been in homes where you turn on the shower, the bathroom faucet, and you have to wait and wait and wait for the hot water. They centrally locate the hot water system to minimize that, that waste and wait times. Outside, the soils are heavily amended with compost, very healthy, very good soils. Uh, any gardener will tell you that's the key to a healthy landscape. They utilize native plants in the landscape, chose site-specific plants, and no lawn, no big grassy lawn there. Um, so there's no sprinkler system. Now there, it's, uh, it's in the Issaquah Highlands and there are nice parks nearby, so if people wanna go out and throw a Frisbee or something, that uh, is available to them, but at the homes themselves, there's no lawns. And all of that collectively makes for very water efficient homes. Uh, again, our role, Cascade Water Alliance, our role was helping them on the water side and we helped help them achieve water sense certification. Now that's a program by the US EPA. Uh, it's a set of building standards and if the home is built to those standards, uh, the home itself, not just the fixtures, but the home itself receives this certification. And the significance of our doing this was, this was the first time in the country where all the homes in a development received certification. That hadn't been done before. So that was kind of a fun uh, moment for us. And uh, we had a little event to acknowledge that. So there's representatives from my organization, the city of Issaquah EPA, presenting uh, the water sense certification to Mr. Ono of Ichijo Homes Northwest. Uh, kind of a nice moment, and so lots of uh, handshaking and back slapping and all that, and that was great. But fast forward uh, a few years, uh, the homes were all sold and, and occupied, and we wanted to know, well, what actually happened <laughs> uh, for this great project? Specifically, were homeowners pleased with their water since new homes? Did they care? Did they like them? Did they not like them? Did it make a difference? And also, did the project achieve the 71% reduction in municipal water use? So on the first question, 
we constructed a very detailed survey for each of the homeowners. And we didn't want to go back and bother them four or five times talking about water and then going back with energy. So uh, we had a combined survey covering all those elements that I talked about at the beginning. We're just concerned with the water right now. And then on the second question, we have access to the uh, utility bills, so we were able to look at their water use uh, patterns. So I'll show you the survey here. This is, uh, this is pretty busy, I know, but just to orient you uh, on the uh, left there, the range is strongly disagree to the right, uh, I'm sorry, strongly agree to strongly disagree. And then there's a list of questions there. And these questions concern the fixtures and appliances, the shower head, the clothes washer, the toilets, and so forth. And uh, so the bottom line is, uh, the more check marks on the left side, the, the better. And the customers uh, generally gave very favorable reviews to the fixtures and appliances, about an 87% positive rating. Uh, the rainwater harvesting system, also pretty good. And there is a little maintenance that goes along with that. The question seven there about uh, the is the water coming from the cistern relatively clean and odorless? You know, a few people uh, ding them there, uh, but there's a story behind that. After the homes were all built and occupied, you remember the photo of the solar panels on the roofs. Well, it turns out that that makes excellent bird habitat. And so they had an issue there with birds roosting underneath the solar panels, which was dubbed Pigeon Gate. Uh, so they had, to, they had to deal with that. Um, but they fixed it, they put netting around the solar panels and that solved the problem. But at least for a time, there was a concern with uh, you know, birds doing what they do on the roof, that that would uh, cause water quality issues. And so that was reflected a little bit in the survey there. But on the whole, still pretty favorable for rainwater harvesting, which is a, a new thing for all the residents up there. Landscaping, um, nobody missed having to give up their weekends to be a slave to their lawns. Right, so that was that was all good. People love it's it's really beautiful landscaping. The native plants there are becoming more mature now. Really nice. Storm water is all managed on site. That was one of the other project goals, and uh, people gave us high marks for that to 92 percent. So on that first question, uh, do people like living in their water since homes? Yeah, unquestionably they did. They loved all the other features of the homes. The energy efficiency again, not the focus of what we're looking at. But uh, the water efficiency, they, they definitely like that. So moving on to the water usage, again, um, we have the billing records. And I, I actually visited each of the homes to perform the survey in person, which was really nice. I got to meet the folks up there. And we had some really good conversations. Uh, and I was able to confirm how many people lived in the homes. So that's how we're able to come up with the gallons per person per day. So we have two sets of data here. The darker blue is the actual uh, utility uh, billing record information. This is municipal water uh, use. That's what the city provides. Then the light blue on top is from the rainwater system, cisterns. Uh, you'll notice that the rainwater numbers are all the same, 11.46. And the reason for that is there's no meter on the rainwater cistern. So we don't actually know the exact amount. However, my industry has spent uh, many years researching uh, the, how often people use the bathroom, uh, how often they wash their hands, take a shower in the homes. So we have really good numbers on all of that. So we're able to apply that uh, in this situation and come up, I think, with a pretty, pretty firm number. If we sum those two together, we come up with an average of about 31 gallons of water use per person per day. And you can see the breakdown. About two-thirds comes from the municipal water supply, and about one-third comes from rainwater. Uh, you'll often hear that uh, you know, Americans use so much water than uh, other, other developed countries, and that's you know, generally true. There are reasons for that. But these numbers compare very favorably to uh, Germany, England, Australia, uh, Singapore, uh, Japan, uh, any of those countries, pretty remarkable um, low numbers there. So what are some of the takeaways from this project? Well, first, uh, homeowners are generally very pleased with their water since new homes. They like the features just fine. The water efficiency is exceeding the project goal. The goal, remember, was 29 gallons per person per day of municipal 
and we're here about 19 or 20. So uh, exceeding that goal by a wide margin. Pictures and appliances are great. No perception of sacrifice. So when I visited each of the homeowners, I really poked around at that issue a little bit. I wanted to know if you know, managing a rainwater cistern and, and all of that, if it felt strange or weird or anything, and nobody minded. They're perfectly happy uh, with, with the systems there. And also, I think you can say that very efficient uh, homes are possible and practical. So a couple of questions I'd like to leave you with. What can we do to create more sustainable development like the Z-Home project? At the beginning, I showed you that list of stakeholders who helped make this happen. And it was, uh, it was pretty remarkable, but uh, there were a lot of people working for years to bring this project to fruition. That's not practical. So what, what needs to change? What kinds of things need to change to make this sort of development just commonplace, just the way we do things? And secondly, what can we do to improve the water efficiency of our existing homes? We most of our existing homes can never get to this level of water efficiency. It's just not cost effective, but we know that there are lots of things we can do to make them more water efficient. So what, uh, what kinds of things can we do? Thank you.